Hey folks, how you doing? Welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study from Safe Harbor Fellowship Baptist Church. Uh, it's good to have you with us. And uh, right now, folks, we are going through some unprecedented times in our in our lives, in our country, and indeed in the whole world. Uh, just times like I've never been in in my lifetime. And uh, you know, I have people ask me all the time, "Is how long is this going to last? I have no idea. Uh, will our country ever be the same? I have no idea. I, I just don't know. Uh, what I do know is that the most important thing that I can tell you is that God is still on his throne and Jesus Christ is still seated at his right hand. And they are not taken aback by anything that's going on. They know the beginning from the end, and so we are in good hands because we are in Christ. So, they know our situation. God the Father, our Heavenly Father knows our situation. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ knows our situation, and we are in their hands. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Our Lord, our Savior, is seated on his heavenly throne, watching over us. And that is what we need to know. So, since God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ are both seated on their thrones in heaven, and we are their ambassadors on earth, and they have not called us home to heaven, we need to be about the business that they saved us, that that Jesus Christ died to save us to carry out. Our ambassadorship is not done. That hasn't changed because of circumstances. The only circumstances that changes that is when the king calls his ambassador home. So let's have a word of prayer and we'll get into our study for tonight. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do love you. And Father, we thank you for loving us. Father, I thank you for just the comfort of knowing that you have me as your child. You're watching over me. You're caring for me. Lord, no matter what happens, the worst thing that could happen if I was to get the coronavirus, and Lord, I pray I don't. I pray every day that I don't. But if I did, and if I died, I would be in heaven with you. I believe that it's more needful that I'm here teaching and preaching the word of God to your people. But I'm not God. But tonight, Lord, as we come to this study, I just pray, Lord, that you would open our hearts. Father, I pray that you would give me exactly the words that you would have me to say. And Father, I pray that through everything that's said, Lord, and everything that's done, that Lord Jesus Christ would be lifted up and glorified and magnified on this earth. And we just ask this in his holy and precious name. Amen. So, do you ever ask yourself, why do I do the things that I do, especially when you've just done something that's, uh, shall we say, not very smart, all right? I, I ask myself that a lot because I, I do things and I'll say, man, that's pretty stupid. Why did I do that? And, uh, you know, that's what we're going to talk about today. Why do we do the things that we do? So the way to figure it out 
and to, for me to explain it to you, uh, is it's the human condition, and we all live in that condition, and it's all based on human history. Now, what we're going to do tonight is have a little history lesson, if you will, and uh, because that's where we find the answers for what we do and why we do what we do. So, we'll, we'll start by looking at where it all started, then answer these four questions, right? Where it all started, and then these four questions. What went wrong? Why is that decision so important to us today? The third question is where do we find the cure? And then the final question is what must I do personally? So let's get started and we'll go back to where it all started in Genesis chapter 1 and look at verses 26 through 28. Genesis chapter 1 verses 26 through 28. Verse 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now folks, it is important that you understand the commission that God gave Adam, the man and the woman, when he created them. I'm going to, I want to go over this one more time. Verse 28 of Genesis chapter 1 says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. So God created man perfect in his own image and likeness and gave them complete dominion or control, if you will, over the earth and everything on it and around it. That's a pretty good setup. I mean, you have to admit, God set everything up perfectly because God does everything perfectly. So what went wrong? Still in the book of Genesis, chapter 3. We'll look at the first seven verses. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and that it was a tree, and a tree, I'm sorry, to be desired to make one wise. She took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves 
together and made themselves aprons. So, Satan shows up and tempts the woman. And she falls for it. But look at what he does. Look at how he does it. He shows up, and, and the Bible says that he was more subtle than any beast of the field. And the first thing that he does is he questions, which causes her to question what God really said. And then he changed what God said. What God really said in chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, verses 16 and 17, says, And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. So what happens? Chapter 3, verse 1. Satan shows up to the woman and he changes what God said, just slightly, but enough, and he asks it in a, he says it in a question form to get the woman to think. Well then she changes it too. She adds to what God says because God didn't say anything about touching it. So don't eat of it. So she falls for the temptation because it was a, it was a beautiful tree, and uh, you know I mean look at what it says it was good for food, uh, it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to buy, desired to make one wise. She goes, sounds good to me, right? So she falls for the temptation. The man just goes along with the flow of the situation, and he eats of the fruit also. What went wrong is they did not exercise the dominion that God had given them. Remember, we've seen that in, in chapter 1 and verse 28. says, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. They could have told Satan, get behind me, Satan, and he would have had to have left. But they didn't exercise their dominion. You know what? That's the same problem we have. So what happens? Adam and his wife now do the one thing, the one thing, that God never, ever intended for man to have to do. Now they have to choose between good and evil. That's what the tree is. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God never wanted man to have to make that choice. But they chose to make that choice. And guess what? Look with me at verse 8. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 8. And they heard the voice of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. Their very first decision that they make in, in discerning between good and evil was a bad decision. They decide to hide on God. First choice bad choice. That, my friends, is what went wrong. So why is that decision so important to us today? Turn in your Bibles to Genesis chapter 5. Genesis chapter 5 and verse 3. Well, let's just start in verse 1, and we'll read down through verse 3. Genesis 5, 1 says, This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Male and female created he them, and blessed them, 
and called their name Adam in the day when they were created. Now, verse 3. And Adam lived an hundred and thirty years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Did you see that? Adam had a son in his own likeness, in his own image, and he called his name Seth. So what is that? It's no longer the image and likeness of God. It's that of a fallen sinner. You say, well, how do you know that? Well, because the Bible tells me so. Romans chapter 5 and verse 12. The Bible says, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We were all born with Adam's sin nature. We are all born in the likeness and image of Adam, a fallen sinner. You could say we all have the same disease. Brings me to an important question. If you had the cure for COVID-19 and you kept it hid in your house and you wouldn't give it so that the whole world could be cured of the COVID-19, don't you think that people would think that you was, was evil and that there was something bad wrong with your way of thinking? Well, folks, think about this. We had the cure for sin the disease that not only destroys the body, but sends people to hell. And sometimes we fail to tell people what the cure for their disease is. Just a thought. So, question number three. Where do we find the cure? Where do we find the cure? Let's start in John chapter 3 and verse 16. Verse that most people are familiar with. It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Not everybody in the world knows that verse or they've seen that verse or they've heard that verse. But the next verse is important as well. Verse 17 says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. You say, what do you mean might be saved? It's, there's a possibility. It's a choice that we have to make. We'll get to that in a minute. But God sent His Son not to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. Romans chapter 5 again, and verse 8, says, But God commendeth his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Look, folks, Christ died for us knowing that we were his enemy. Remember reading the Gospels. We just, we just had our, our, uh, our resurrection celebration last Sunday. Remember when Christ is on the cross and He says, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Even on the cross, after being scourged and tortured and crucified, Jesus' heart forgiveness but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners Christ died for us Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3 
says, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, set down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Jesus left his throne, came to earth, died a gruesome death so that he could save sinners. Just like me and you. And then he ascended back to heaven and he's seated on his throne at the right hand of the Father. And he left us here as, it, as ambassadors for his kingdom until he calls us home. We need to be about our Father's business. So we see that God gave us Jesus, his Son, for a cure to our sin problem. But how does it work? I think that's a legitimate question. How does it work? Well, Paul gives us the answer in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the first four verses. Where it says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, or the good news, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Now folks, that's the Gospel. Very clear, very pointed. It's all about Jesus Christ. It's very simple. It's explained very, very simply there. Christ died. He was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's the good news. He rose again from the grave so that we don't have to spend time in the grave. So our final question for the day is what must I do personally? This is decision time, my friends. John chapter 1 and verse 12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So then, how do you receive Jesus Christ as your own? How do you, how do you fulfill that? It's, I mean, that, that's what the verse says, but as many as received Him. So how do you go about receiving Him? If you turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 10, I'll get there momentarily. Romans chapter 10, beginning in verse 8. Romans chapter 10 and verse 8 says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is the word of faith which we preach. That is the gospel that Paul said that he preached there in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, where he, he said in verse, verse 2, by which also ye are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. To believe in vain is to know that this is exactly what happened according to the scriptures that Christ died for your sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scripture. You know that. You believe that. But you don't receive that. Verse 9, back in Romans chapter 10, and verse 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Paul goes on in verse 13 and says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's what 
each and every one of us has to do personally. It's call upon the name of the Lord. Say, God, I know I'm a sinner. God, I repent of my sin. God, please send Jesus Christ into my heart and save me. I believe, Lord, that he died and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, just like the Bible says. I want Jesus in my heart to save me from my sin. That's all you got to do. It's just be honest with God. Confess that you're a sinner. Turn from your sin and ask Jesus Christ into your heart to save you. I pray that you'll do that just now. I'm going to close in prayer. And uh, God bless you. And I hope that you have a blessed week. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us, Lord. Father, I pray that your message will go out, that, Lord, it will uh, reach people who need it desperately. Father, I pray for the Christians that see this, that it will inspire them to share the gospel with somebody who desperately needs it. And, Father, I know that if we will be faithful, that you will be faithful to put those people in our way, in our path that we can be a witness and a testimony for you because that's why we're here. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for your goodness to us. We just ask that you would bless us now. In Jesus' name, amen.